Uh, hi guys, so I'm Kai Bin and I'll be the one talking about uh, topics related to finance, personal finance, budgeting and investment. So the main reason why, uh, as my partner Sean has said that, uh, the reason why we want to create content such as this because there's a lot of young Malaysians that have the drive and have the urge to learn about these topics but they do not know where to find. So with regards to finance, I do understand that there's a multitude of content on YouTube on, on such personal finance, how to invest, how to be a millionaire as such. But a lot of these contents are either very clickbaity or they're very uh, relevant to foreigners such as the US and UK mainly. So there's a lack of, of content uh, directly accessible for Malaysians. So we want to create uh, these content by Malaysians, for Malaysians such as you all who are interested to learn. So why finance is that? Because I feel that uh, financial literacy is a huge, uh, I would say, problem in Malaysia, whereby a lot of people, especially young people, do not know how to save, how to budget their money and how to invest. But a lot of people have the end goal of uh, achieving financial freedom, uh, retiring early, but what's the point of having these goals without knowing how to build your baby steps to eventually get there? So back to the topic, uh, this topic will be about budgeting for beginners. So especially for people who have no idea how to structure or plan how to uh, have a budget out of their income. So I do understand that this budgeting plan may not be applicable for everyone because there are some people who are honestly living paycheck to paycheck, who might even their debts and expenses are higher than their income. But I will create subsequent videos on how to save money, how to increase and generate more income, how to create other side incomes. So uh, for this topic, it will just be uh, budgeting for people whose income do exceed their expenses. But uh, most of the people will usually, when they get their paycheck or even their allowance from their parents or students, they will just start splurging their cash, going out to eat good food, going out to cafes, even buying bubble teas. I mean, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but if let's say your goal is to achieve financial freedom and gain wealth and retire early, doing those things will not help you get there. So having and having a structure and having a plan as to how to allocate your money and your budget is very important. So for this budgeting for beginners, I'll be building a structure so that everyone can follow from all income groups. So it doesn't matter if you're earning 3,000 a month, 5,000 a month, up to 20,000 a month, the percentage based on your income will be uh, calculated as so. So there are about six things that I feel that's very important to be allocated uh, after you receive your income. So for this example, I'll be using uh, 3,000 ringgit which is your uh, taking home income, which is after tax and after EPF. So EPF will not be something that I'll be uh, talking about as if, if anyone is interested, I'll talk about it more in future videos. But to roughly sum it up, EPF will be like a retirement fund. So the government sort of force you to, to put a sum of money into this fund and you'll only be able to retrieve it after a certain age. So let's say your take home income is 3000. The first part and the most important part I feel that the money should go to will be something called an emergency fund. So what's an emergency fund? Emergency fund is a fund where it helps you to cover your expenses in the case of an emergency, such as, for example, during this coronavirus situation, let's say in the unforeseen circumstances that you get laid off or you get fired or you get a pay cut, you need this emergency fund to help support you and your family and your loved ones from uh, not having too much trouble. So I would usually allocate about 5% of your income, for which this case will be 150 ringgit into the emergency fund. So how do you know when your emergency fund goal is reached? So for, for starters, I'll feel that for single people who are living on their own, having an emergency fund that's able to cover up to six months of their expenses is the minimum. Whereas if let's say you have a family, you have children, I would say up to a year and a year and a half. So let's say you have uh, managed to save up uh, six months worth of your expenses. Where do you put your emergency fund? So uh, I feel that Malaysians should at least have two to three bank accounts because it makes it easier for them to strategize and know where their money goes. So let's say the 3,000 ringgit for your paycheck goes into this uh, bank account. I will call it the current account where all your transaction goes in and out. Your emergency fund will be put into another uh, high yield savings bank account and that will be your savings account. So let's say you manage to save up to six months of expenses. That savings in that account, you can either allocate it to an FD, be it a monthly or a yearly basis because the key criteria for an emergency fund is liquidity. So you need to be able to liquidate it and withdraw the money uh, as you need. So a fixed deposit or savings account is a good place to put your money. So next, the second thing that I feel is, is important where your money should go is retirement savings. So I do understand that a lot of people will then say, oh, there is already the EPF fund for your retirement. So why do you need another separate uh, savings for your retirement? 
It's important because a lot of people throughout their life, they will withdraw their EPF for different purposes, let's say to buy a house or for their children's education. And eventually, if they do not pay attention or take notice of the sum left in the EPF, most of the time, most Malaysians will not be able to survive purely based on uh, the amount left in the EPF. Furthermore, if people want to retire early and have financial freedom, just having their EPF will definitely not be able to sustain your living for 20, 30 years in the future. So for retirement savings, I also think that you should allocate 5% of uh, your income to retirement savings. And similarly, it will be put into your savings account and then eventually into any low-risk investment. So low-risk investments such as EPF, Amana Saham, bonds, fixed deposits, any of such uh, vehicles where your money will be in a very safe place and despite the interest rate not being very high it's definitely a safe place that you know nothing will happen to your money so next we then come to the most important topic which is investments so i feel that personally i would take up to 20 to 30 percent of my income into investments but i understand that not everyone has the, the liquidity or have the goal of, of investing like I do. But for the bare minimum, I think that 10% of your income should be taken into investments, which in this case will be 300 ringgit. So what kind of investment vehicles are accessible in Malaysia? How do you choose what type suits your personality and which is better for you? What are the pros and cons of each? I will talk about this in other further videos. So after all the savings and investments, it comes back to a more fun part that maybe more people would like to hear, which is short-term savings. So why do you need short-term savings? It's for something that let's say you want to save to reward yourself. Uh, let's say you want to buy a nice watch, you want to buy a nice purse, or even you have a vacation for the end of the year. So why is this important is that if you want to be financially literate and free, you do not want to be constantly chasing after debts. So you do not want to go for a trip, swiping your credit card for every expenses, and then eventually chasing after them, trying to pay it back. Whereas if you start saving for it beforehand, there's a sense of satisfaction when you go for the trip knowing that I already have this budget and cash in my hand. So short term savings, I'll usually recommend about another 5% of your income, which is about 150, and you can save it for the goal that you have, be it a vacation or something nice to reward yourself. Then the fifth part that your money has to go to is needs and necessities. So there's nothing much to talk about this as your needs is things that you need to survive such as food, drinks, rental, utilities bill, etc. What is important about needs is that people have to understand and differentiate between needs and wants. Needs is something that you need to survive on a daily basis and not something that you go out for fine dining and say that because that's food, that's needs. That has uh, expanded to wants and no longer needs. So let's say in this case, I put the average needs of having 2,000 uh, ringgit a month. So by then, after all the emergency fund, short-term savings, retirement fund, investments and needs, you'll be left with 250 ringgit. So why is this last portion that your money should go to? It will be the part that everyone likes the most, including myself, which is spending. So why is this structure and plan important? Because if you learn how to pay yourself first before spending and splurging the money, you will be able to have more control over your financial future. How many people uh, and the norm in Malaysia would be that by the end of the month, you look at your bank account, you look at your wallet and you realize that little bit of cash left and you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to start saving next month. I'm going to start uh, investing my money next month. But eventually, uh, nothing happens out of it and you only keep saying next month, next month and until by the time you realize it's too late, you start regretting. So I really like this saying whereby the path to financial freedom is not about the speed, but about the direction. So I do understand that some people might say that, you know, I, my expenses are more than my income, I can barely survive. How do you expect me to save and invest? So, but most importantly is having this knowledge and having this goal is more important because everyone have different financial backgrounds. Some people are born in a wealthier family, so they have a greater head start. So you should not be comparing to people your age and you should not be looking at your age and saying, is it too late? Is it too early to do so? It's never too late or too early to start budgeting and having financial plans. It's all about having that knowledge and starting as early as you can. Because having compounding interest, the earlier you start to save and the earlier you start to invest, the faster it will be to achieve financial freedom and do whatever you want in your life. So these last 250 ringgit, like I said, will be spending. And the good thing about this is it will be guilt-free spending because you know you have planned out your financials, you have saved what's necessary, you have invested what's necessary. So this last portion of your guilt-free spending, you can then freely splurge on whatever you want. Let's say a nice movie, a nice food, uh, bringing out friends, going out with your friends. So at the end of the day, I do understand that money does not buy you happiness, but money is a thing that gives you a safety net so that you can go on to protect you, your loved ones and your families from uh, having to do things that 
they don't like or having no choice in their life because they do not have money. So ultimately money at the end of the day is just a tool to help you achieve happiness and with more money, you can then freely go ahead and do anything you like. So with that being said, uh, we have come to the end of the video. So uh, I'll see you next time and please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and leave a comment down below for any future topics or content that you wish for me to talk about. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.